What's going on, everybody? Yeah, it's your host, man. It's the Wolf of Crypto here. Y'all are uh, y'all tapped in with the Wolf of Crypto podcast. Another episode here today. Today's topic, uh, margin fi. Yeah, that's what today's subject is of choice. Probably heard me mention it on a other episode. Told y'all I was gonna be talking about each particular platform. Kind of you know deep diving a little bit here, unraveling the different protocols, platforms, what they have to offer. This particular bad boy, this one right here, is a decentralized lending protocol. It's on Solana, obviously. Prioritizes risk management, you know, providing a safe, easy solution for users to access some leverage. And then obviously, you know, you want to capitalize on that capital, right? This particular protocol is fully permissionless. Yes, it's got a suite of smart contracts that's a play on the blockchain here, paired with some real-time risk management and automatic liquidations. Hey, hey, hello. Uh, so you're probably, probably wondering like, Hey, what's this protocol? What makes it a little bit different? Why does it stand out? Why are we using it? Well, number one, why we're using it, obviously, because, Hey, we're trying to get this airdrop. It's airdrop season, folks. We hunting out here for airdrops. Well, and unlike traditional lenders, like I was saying, Martify is fully permissionless which means basically there's there's no middleman, right? Uh, it's just you and Martinify, you access the protocol services directly, and in parallel, Martinify leverages sophisticated risk management mechanisms and has an emphasis on risk transparency so that its users have a better understanding of the risk that they're taking and so that they can obviously better manage this risk. So... Basically telling you, hey, man, if you do plan on risking A, B, and C, well, it's going to look like this. If you decide to go down that road, here's what your risk is going to look like. Here's your potential, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Hopefully, every guy kind of gets an idea on that one. Now, these protocol servers are entirely open for public use. There's... No restrictions. Anybody can use them. Um, like I said, this is it's a decentralized, right? It's a decentralized protocol. Inspired by, obviously, the decentralized movement. Normally, typically, traditional finances can, or say financial services, can restrict access based on geography or wealth status, which obviously will favor some of those that might be in the categories of the elites, privileged, and you guys know what I'm talking about. So, again, anybody can use this, no matter where you're at. So, it's one thing I like uh, about this particular pro call is I can be anywhere. Uh, I know certain pro calls come with certain restrictions based on geographic locations, all that good stuff. Uh, it's a permissionless protocol, meaning obviously there's no middleman. It's you in the protocol. You just go directly wherever you need. You go right to it, and that's it. Simple in the story, blah. So, you know, how is this compared to some other decentralized lending protocols? Well, obviously boasting that this protocol here, you have to, you got your risk management systems in place. Uh, the transparency so that obviously users have a better understanding of the risk that they're taking. So that's going to help them manage all those risks a little bit better, which ultimately should lead them to having better profits and cutting your losses, right? Another unique feature about Martinify is their lending architecture. It supports as a collateral non-tokenized trader, uh, basically allowing traders to unify their entire DeFi portfolio across a blockchain ecosystem with margin in a way that's manageable, safe, and capital efficient. 
uh as far as that i guess trying to explain that a little bit better you're if you ever come across a protocol especially in the fire world uh where you're able to be able to manage multiple portfolios across different blockchains again that's probably gonna probably blow your mind a little bit uh because you're probably thinking, how can you manage across every blockchain, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I think that's what they're trying to at least get at as far as the particular features that this protocol offers compared to some other protocols. So um, being able to kind of keep track of your portfolio, maybe being able to interact, yada, 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 blah, 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 right? Uh, now, as far as the actual platform itself, I would say pretty easy to, to navigate with. Um, again, what you can do on here, you're gonna be lending, borrowing. That's kind of like, you know, the main two things that you'll be doing. Do have the opportunity to stake. Now, staking on here, uh, it's a little bit different. Looks like the token is called LST, liquid staking token. Um, I think this might be margin Fi's actual like official token for their particular platform. Um, but for some reason, I've, I feel like I've seen, uh, this token being offered, uh, and other DeFi services that you can use. So this might be a token that you actually can stake on here and then turn around, take that LSCT token and then actually go use it on some other platforms as well. So that's something that I, I got to find out here uh, to see how you can kind of, I guess, maximize that particular option. Obviously, you can swap on here, which is powered by Jupiter. Um, and then bridging is another feature. It's powered by, I think, Mind Finance. So you ever want to bridge from Ethereum to Solana and then vice versa? Uh, I definitely do know you can do that. As far as other blockchains and bridging on all that stuff like that. I'm not sure what the blockchains you can bridge on. I'm assuming it's going to be anything. Um, oh, actually, I click the drop down box to kind of figure that out. So it looks like you got Ethereum, Binance, Smart Chain, Avalanche, and Arbitrum. So those are different networks that you can actually go ahead and bridge between on this particular platform. Bridging is something that's entirely different, can be somewhat complex, a little maybe a little bit confusing for those that, like I said, that might not be too familiar with the space, but um, I have bridged before and I, you know, like I said, this was like, man, early days, uh, especially I want to say I bridged from Solana to Ethereum. I think that was like my first uh, blockchains that I used to to bridge with. And believe it or not, found it. It was kind of somewhat easy. I mean, I would say I watched, I think, some YouTube videos and stuff like that just to be on the safe side. Obviously, didn't uh, experiment with too much money because, you know, before you start moving big chunks of money in the crypto space, you definitely want to have your comfortability level at a good place before you just, like I said, start doing this. Cause again, you gotta remember if you're not careful, you can lose your funds and I can attest to that. I've done it plenty of times, might still do in the future, obviously try not to, but there's times where you're sometimes you're moving a little bit too fast, not paying attention. And then there it is. It happens. So, uh, so you're able to bridge on the platform. And like I said, you have those particular blockchains to choose from. Now, as far as, like I said, their earn here, it looks like you can, it looks like you're only able to earn bunk um, and the APY is 10%, but you got to lock them up for six months. So, oof. Depending on the type of holder you are on bunk, you know, this could be a play, it could not be, but... Um, I'm not for sure if this qualifies as far as earning points and all that good stuff. Cause again, they have a point system, which is part of their airdrop. 
as far as how you earn these points on this platform, lending, borrowing, and referring. So on the lending side, I believe you get like, oh, it's one to one. So for every dollar you lend, you get like one point. And then on the borrowing side, it jumps up a little bit. So for every dollar, I believe you borrow, you get four points on that side. So I might do a little bit of borrowing. Um, obviously, like I said, you got to be careful with which token you're borrowing because you got to pay attention to the APR um, and trying to avoid having to pay, to having to repay too much. But again, depending on how you look at it uh, and depending on what type of funds you're actually using, like I said, I'm probably going to be using some funds that it, I've already made some money with, like I said, my salon position has gone up. And then also too, I've had some other uh, investments that have turned around a little bit. So I'm thinking of kind of picking from there and playing on these particular platforms, trying to get my uh, airdrop tokens. And then when it's said, when it's all said and done, hopefully uh, some of those positions actually are a little bit bigger than where they're started at. But Definitely going to be playing with the lending side. Obviously, I'm already lending right now. I'm lending some USDC. Uh, I want to say the APR on that is 5%, but again, I'm getting my points. I'm getting my points up, man. I'm trying to just get as many points, trying to get my ranking up and all that stuff because, again, something that you have to keep in mind when it comes to participating on all these particular platforms to stack up your airdrop uh, profits is, you know, Depending on how much volume you're using, uh, that's going to be something that obviously comes into play. And then how many people you're obviously bringing to a platform and then the people that you do bring to a platform, how much volume they're playing. And so there's a little little ladders here and there that kind of go into play. But again, this is going to be fun, right? Um, As far as their... Omni looks like they have another feature that I haven't really, like I said, I haven't touched based on with too much yet, but it's another, it's another time of the day, right? Because that's the one thing about these platforms, even though they are the same as far as offering features and stuff like that, they still are a little bit different as far as navigating, using the platform. Um, And then as far as this particular airdrop season, I will have to find out to see when this might be ending, but definitely want to get those points up right now. So guys want to join me and uh, come play on the platform. Obviously you'll have my link to kind of help me out here, but that will at least do it for this particular episode. Not going to harp on too much more of the platform probably will leave that for another time again as airdrop season is commenced take advantage now get in early uh because once the masses come and you know like the last project i was talking about how you know it was either it was an either or proposition so it was either they get to this many tokens or was either you know, people just participate, participate, blah, blah, blah. And then that's when their particular airdrop might end. So that will do it for this particular one. Again, Margin Fi Finance on the Solana blockchain. Obviously, you're going to need a Solana eligible wallet to partake. Um, but I'm excited, man. I feel like I got more tasks and a lot more things to not necessarily talk about, but also experiment with and build up my own tools and skills uh, as far as getting better with this whole supply, borrowing, lending, and all that stuff. Because I have seen people use it to advantage where you know they can make some some serious dough and then take it right back and put it into the native token and hi hi, hi, hi. like i said it's a lot of stuff man a lot of stuff a lot of fun stuff to say um 
but I appreciate y'all tuning in to the episode. If you guys happen to be new, hopefully you guys are enjoying the show, subscribing to some of my different outlets here. Um, definitely be a lookout for the YouTube channel since all these different projects I've been mentioning, they're definitely going to be needing some videos so you guys can visually get a better understanding of what I'm talking about here and also be able to follow your kid. Because again, if I happen to be one of those lucky people, or I shouldn't say lucky, but well, I guess you could say there's a little luck involved there. But if I happen to be one of those people that end up waking up and I look at my wallet and I see an airdrop and I'm like, oh, it's five figures <laughs> like that 18,000, 20,000 people were getting off that uh, Gito airdrop. I'm like, yo, that's it's not too shabby, man. Not too shabby for an airdrop. And again, for the work that you put in to get to that airdrop, that's something that's what you got to put in to understand it. But I am your host, the Wolf of Crypto. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. That wraps it up for this particular episode of the Wolf of Crypto podcast. Y'all take it easy, man. Peace.